Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Salemi. I'm with Dynascape Software. And today uh, is our next installment of the uh, Managed 360 Masterclass Series, where uh, we're going to try and uh, help you get the absolute most out of your landscape business operating system, and that being Managed 360. Today, uh, we have Jordan Weir with us, uh, our uh, implementation and training specialist, and uh, he is going to take us through uh, our eighth installment in maximizing the efficiencies uh, that you can gain with your crews and uh, admin people uh, with the uh, mobile crew tracking app. And, uh, you know, with this, uh, reducing admin, improving accuracy, uh, reducing paper use, and effectively using staff time in the most productive way possible is what this is all about. And Jordan, thanks for uh, covering some time out of your day for us. Um, I think, uh, you know, what uh, all of this comes down to is uh, helping uh, our clients uh, implement technology in the field. And um, what it all comes down to is, at least initially, and I'm sure you've seen this in your implementations, uh, is a culture and a process change, you know, going from having to print out timesheets and uh, having paper that uh, crew leaders have to remember to fill out uh, and the culture of uh, using uh, either a phone or a tablet in the field, uh, having an increased level of accountability for a crew leader because uh, now they're responsible for tracking their time and making sure it gets put into the system and um, overall streamlining the amount of uh, admin uh, work and streamlining the uh, workflow that uh, everyone in the company now has uh, as a result of implementing uh, a piece of technology like a crew tracking app. Um, so I, I think what we'll do uh, at this point is just dive right in and um, we'll have Jordan uh, take us through uh, just how we can be uh, effective and efficient with the uh, Dynascape Managed 360 mobile crew tracking app. All right. Thanks, Joe. I'm going to switch over to my screen now. Perfect. So I'm going to pull up my phone right here so you can see that I'm streaming my phone to my computer. And so I'm going to be demoing from my phone and then also talking about what's going on in the website in the background. So with the mobile app, I'm gonna talk a little bit about setup first. So uh, first you need to install the mobile app on your phone so you can download it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store if you have an Android phone. And once it's downloaded, uh, you will open it up. And you, the first thing you're gonna see is the company site, username and password. So this is what you need to log in. Um, as you can see, I've got my site right here. So you just put in the beginning of your website name for the company site right there, and then your username and password. Uh, and by the way, since this is an app on your phone, remember to check for updates. We'll release updates every once in a while. Uh, so be sure to keep the app up to date. So from the login screen, of course, username and password, I'm going to type that in in a moment. But you can also see down here at the bottom left corner, there's an EN button. And I can tap on that to switch between Spanish and English to change the language of the app. So I'm gonna hide my screen for a moment as I type in my username and password. Bear with me for a second. There we go. All right, so I've loaded up my timesheet for the day, and now I'm logged in. So what we see on the main page of the app, this would be the main menu, is what you're presented with when you log in. Uh, we can see our timesheets, where I have uh, an in-progress tab right here, a submitted tab right here, and then an actions menu up in the top right corner. And, and this actions menu is contextual, so it uh, you will see different things if you're on the home screen versus if you're actually within a timesheet, there's different actions you can take. So before I go into actually opening up a timesheet, I wanna show you what happened uh, on the website. So this is my timesheet right here for construction crew number one for today. And we can see that it is right here on the app. So that means that this timesheet had to be created in advance of me opening the app. So, you know, the, the night before or the morning of, 
even a couple days before, you're gonna set up your timesheets for your crews, so that way when they load up their app in the morning, their timesheet is downloaded and they're presented with everything they need to do for the day. So because I've logged in, we can see that this app currently is, uh, sorry, this timesheet is currently open, but if I refresh the page now that it's on my phone, you can see that the timesheet is locked. So I'll talk uh, briefly about timesheet locking. When a timesheet is locked, that is because it has been downloaded to the mobile app and the permission to edit the timesheet is exclusively on the mobile app while the timesheet is locked. And that's because you don't wanna have people editing the timesheet in two different places and potentially overwriting each other's changes. So control remains in one place. Um, the one thing that you can do from the website while the, uh, the timesheet is locked in use on the phone is you can add additional jobs, work orders, or, or maintenance visits to a timesheet by using the search bar down here. Uh, so if I were to add an additional visit to this timesheet, um, it would allow me to do that, and then I'd want to contact uh, my, my crew leader, the person who's in charge of the timesheet, and I would want to remind them to refresh the app. Um, so a refresh pulls data from the internet, sends data over uh, to the internet, and if there's anything that it has been recently added, it will download it to the timesheet. So I'll talk about refreshing a little bit uh, more, but of course that's dependent upon an internet connection. If you're somewhere with no service and no Wi-Fi, then you're gonna be working offline. Uh, so uh, in those situations, it's important that they download their timesheet at the beginning of the day. And if there's anything unexpected that comes up, they're gonna record that as notes, which can be entered into the system later. One additional thing about timesheet locking is that uh, to unlock the timesheet, you can do that either by logging out of the app. So if I once again hit this actions menu here and select log out, that's gonna take me uh, uh, out of the app so I could log in as somebody else potentially and unlock any timesheets that are on my phone. Uh, submitting a timesheet also will unlock it and send permission back to the main website. And there's a third method, which is kind of a last resort method, and that is right here. So I'll just move this to the side briefly. On the website, if you open a timesheet and select actions, there is a lost phone button. And so when you click on that, it's gonna pop up and say, any unsynced information from the lost device will be lost. This should only be done if the device cannot be recovered. So that means exactly what it says. Uh, the lost phone is of course meant for situations where the phone is unrecoverable. Uh, logging out or submitting the timesheet uh, is always preferable to using this option. Uh, it's kind of just a last resort. Uh, maybe the phone you know, dropped and broke or, or they just lost it and you, there's no hope of recovering it. Um, you need to be able to get that timesheet back and edit it on the website so you can uh, get all that information in and have their uh, job actuals for the day recorded. So use this if that scenario comes up. Otherwise, they're going to be submitting the timesheet from the phone because that's where they're going to fill it out. And the person who fills out the timesheet is going to be the foreman of the timesheet. So you can assign various crew leaders right here. And the first person listed on the timesheet is, of course, uh, the timesheet's foreman. Uh, so we can day by day switch out the foreman if we need to, um, because of course there might be scenarios where uh, one day somebody is sick and um, you have to have a backup foreman come in for them. And in order to have that person access the timesheet, uh, you just for the day change who the foreman is. And uh, let me quickly pull up another timesheet here so I can demonstrate that. Um, do I have any? In progress ones, here we go. So I can change who the foreman is by selecting this button right here, this plus button. When I uh, click on that button, number one, it allows me to add other people to the timesheet, and that's kind of the main point of this button is uh, if there's anybody who's you know kind of a floater in between crews, you can add them to the timesheet for that day. But I can also say, Sandy is sick today, and I'm gonna have Josh fill in as the foreman, so I just switch who the foreman is, take Sandy off, and then maybe add some other people in for the day. And once I apply the changes, it's gonna 
do that. And uh, I have my new foreman. One additional thing about configuration is in order to log into the mobile app, uh, the foreman must have either uh, the foreman security role or the foreman mobile security role. So you can find that on their employee profile. If you go to settings, employees, open up that employee and look at the roles and user settings tab on the employee. That's where you can assign them a username and password. So anybody who can log into Manage360, you're gonna be doing this for them. Uh, but the mobile app has a special case where you might want a foreman to be able to log into the app in order to use the timesheets, but you don't want them to log into the website. So and then for that scenario, we have the foreman mobile security role where all it lets them do is log into the app and fill up the timesheet. Um, the regular foreman role will give you access to the website. So you can check out the role permissions if you go to the settings and decide what's appropriate. So I'm going to go back to my main timesheet here and we can start taking a look at that. So what I see here on my in progress tab, well, first off, I see today's timesheet that I have open in the background. And then I see a timesheet from March 28th. So we can see that today's timesheet has zero of four visits completed. So I haven't started on it yet. I haven't clocked in and out of anything yet. Uh, the March 28th timesheet has two of two visits completed meaning that I was clocked in, so there was some activity on that timesheet, but it was not submitted. So if, if a crew leader forgets to submit a timesheet, it's gonna remain on their phone, and you're gonna see that on the website, that the timesheet is still in progress, and it is locked. And additionally, if we go to the main timesheet menu, we're going to see that as a locked icon on there. So as a supervisor uh, who regularly approves timesheets, you want to stay on top of these, maybe at the end of every week you're approving, if not day by day. But uh, these approved timesheets, this is what you want. If I see an old timesheet that's still in progress, uh, I know that I've got to talk to my guys out in the field and say, please submit that timesheet because we need to get that in there. So generally, you're only going to see today's timesheet here. And if you're creating timesheets a couple days in advance, you'll see uh, timesheets for the next couple days appear. So that's the in progress tab. We have this submitted tab right here. And then over here, I see timesheets that uh, I've submitted for approval, but have not yet approved. So a supervisor, if I were to open my timesheets menu again, I would see this April 5th timesheet as ready for approval and it had been submitted from the mobile app. So the foreman is able to actually open up this timesheet, look around and see what they did, in this case on April 5th. Uh, but once that timesheet is approved, it's taken off the phone and then it uh, just is on the website. So that's what the submitted tab does. You just review what you've recently done. And then, uh, like I said, top right corner is this actions menu. So when I tap on that, I have three options that I'm presented with. The first one is refresh, which once again, uh, contacts the internet. The app isn't constantly checking the internet because that would use up a lot of your data. Um, it will hit the internet whenever you perform an action like uh, a clock in or a clock out if there's an internet connection available. And then also when you hit the refresh button and, and also when you submit a timesheet. So those are the four things. Um, the refresh, uh, like I said earlier, you would use that normally when um, uh, you need to download a new timesheet. Uh, so if I logged in for the day and then my timesheet was created later, I would hit that refresh button to download new timesheets. Or also if I had added new visits onto that timesheet. So that's what you would use that refresh button for. The second option is send diagnostics. And so you only need to use that if you're having a problem with the app and you've been in contact with Dynascape support. So they are support at dynascape.com, just in case you don't have that email. And when you're in contact with them, they will tell you to hit that button. So only do that when you've been in contact with support and they tell you to uh, use that option. Otherwise it creates a ticket with no context. So we want that context in order to be able to uh, actually investigate the issue properly. 
Finally, the log out button, of course, just logs you out of the app. So I could log in then potentially as somebody else. So let's take a look at one of my timesheets. I'll open up today's timesheet. And on here we can see uh, I've got several items on this timesheet. And when we look back on the uh, website, we see this one is a job, and these three here are visits. So I've combined uh, construction and maintenance onto a single timesheet here. Normally you're gonna be doing one or the other, but of course you can do whatever you want on a timesheet on any given day. And the order things are listed here um, is according to their start and end times. So when I built this timesheet, before it went onto the phone, I could have rearranged this by adjusting the times. And then also, it won't appear right now um, as available to select, but optimize order is another option you have if you want to rearrange the order of visits on a timesheet. What that does is it hits Google Maps and uh, creates a route and looks for the best method to take um, and organizes everything that way. And, there's a confirmation step. It's going to ask you if you want to put everything in that order. And of course, you can rearrange again later. So I have everything in the order that I'm expected to uh, attend them. And the crew doesn't have to stick to that order. They can clock into uh, whatever they want. I could do this final mow and trim at the end of the day if I wanted to. But let's just give you a quick overview of what we see on this screen for today's timesheet. Well, we see construction crew number one. And that's, of course, the crew that I made this timesheet for. So crews need to exist as well in order to make timesheets, but that was covered in our timesheet session. The next thing I see are my list of jobs, and the lunch break is a non-billable item. So everything that I'm expected to do today appears as little time cards right here. I have this button right here, which is the add non-billable button. So this opens up my list of non-billable uh, work types, which I can, uh, as the crew, I can use these if I want to. So you might have your crew recording travel time as a non-billable work type. And if that's the case, then you're going to actually select it as something you want to clock into. So you can see that when I tap on that, it opens up the confirm clock in screen, which we're going to see again in a moment. So that's what that button is for. And by the way, that list of non-billable work types comes from the settings. So if I scroll down in the settings to um, non-billable work types, three from the bottom, you can see that here's my list. So I can make any custom non-billable work type by defining a name uh, and marking whether it's paid or unpaid. The next thing that I see on the app, I have these two buttons right here. These are both the clock in button. So whether I tap the orange one or the one in the left corner would depend on whether you're left or right handed. You know, you can, either one is it's the same button. There's this clock up button right here. And if I tap on that, you're going to see a little pop up that says there are no active clock ins. So in order to clock out, of course, I must be clocked into something first. The next thing is this notes area. And so you're gonna see that there's several notes sections on the mobile app. And this one in particular corresponds to equipment notes slash general comments that we see on the main page of the timesheet. And this one is uh, not job specific notes. If I wanted to record something about this uh, uh, Aisha Solomon job, I would record those notes as notes from the crew or notes to the customer in direct relation to that job or visit or whatever it may be, like a work order. Um, equipment notes, general comments are just about stuff that happened that day. Um, you know, maybe a piece of equipment broke down and needs to be repaired. That's the kind of stuff that I would put into there. If I needed to order more materials for a specific job, I would probably put that as notes from the crew. But that can go anywhere you want. So there is also the actions menu once again. And like I said, the actions menu changes depending on where you are. So when I have a timesheet open, I see some new options. I see directions to next visit. Now, if I tap on that button, it's actually going to open up Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever, whatever map software you have. 
and it's going to direct you from your current location to the address that you have listed uh, as the next thing on your timesheet. So I'm not clocked into anything right now, so the first item is my next visit. If I clock into that, then uh, 2241 Silver Birch Court becomes my next uh, visit. So that's gonna just open up Google Maps and help you figure out where you're meant to go next. Reschedule visits. Now this you can use if uh, there's a rain delay or something that happens that prevents you from finishing your work that day or you know you're just not gonna have time to get to a particular job site. You can use this button to take a visit off of the timesheet and then reschedule it to another day. Uh, so when I tap on that, it's gonna show me what I can reschedule. And notice that the construction job is not there. That's because construction jobs are booked off for uh, a length of time. So let's say April 1st to May 1st. Uh, in that case, I would wanna to go to the job in order to adjust the start and end dates uh, if I needed to, but it's booked off for a chunk of time. Things like work orders or maintenance visits are booked for a specific day and a specific time. So that is why I can reschedule those. So if I want to do that, I just pick the visits that I'd like to take off, assign a new start date and time for them, and hit the reschedule button. Now I'm gonna use all three of these visits, so I'm not going to hit reschedule, but if I did, you'd notice that the visits that I chose to reschedule would be taken off, assigned to that new day, and when I make the new timesheet for that day, those visits will appear on that timesheet. The next one, employee summary. So nothing to see right now because there's nothing to summarize. Uh, this summary is going to list everybody who is clocked into that timesheet that day, and it's going to list their earliest time in and their latest time out. So we'll come back to that and see how it's updated after we've used the timesheet a little bit. Finally, I have submit timesheet at the bottom right here. That is my final step. Once I have uh, filled everything out and I'm happy with the way my timesheet is, and I think it's ready for a supervisor to approve, I would hit that button and then the timesheet would be sent off to the website and uh, marked ready for approval so a supervisor can deal with it. So let's do our first clock in. We're, we are ready to start the day. So first I'll demonstrate uh, non-billable work types. So once again, for those, I'm going to tap on that little orange plus button right there. And so I can start my day however I wanted. I, I could have started on one of the jobs. It's up to you to come up with your own workflow and, uh, and tell the crew how they're meant to use the app. Uh, but I could start with yard time. So I would just select that option. And you can see here that I'm presented with all the members of the timesheet, Jordan, Calvin, and Humberto. So these three people here, uh, currently they're uh, clocking into yard time because that's the first thing we're doing that day. Everybody's showing up to the yard uh, in order to prepare uh, to go out and actually do the day's work. So if I need to remove somebody, maybe Humberto is going to join us at the job site and he doesn't need to um, uh, be involved with the yard time. I just hit this red button right here to take him off and now he's gone. So he'll come back later. It's gonna prompt us if we want to use Humberto again later because he is a member of this timesheet. And if I need to add somebody else, I hit add employee, and that is going to pull up my list of employees. And you see Humberto's at the top because he's a member of this timesheet, um, who we uh, took off, so we might wanna easily re-add him. But everybody else that appears here are my employees. So if we got somebody who's just coming on just for the day, I would wanna add them to the timesheet by choosing them from the list. Now, when I clock in, it's automatically going to list the date uh, and time from your phone when you hit that button. So I hit that button about two minutes ago, as you can see. So it's, you might take a moment to complete the clock in process, uh, but 2.53 p.m. Now, I probably started my day a little bit earlier than this, so I can rewind up to, let's say, 7.53 a.m., and now I have uh, backdated my time. 
So that's important. The crew needs to be able to adjust their start and end time uh, in accordance with what actually happened uh, because they might forget to clock in. However, you can audit this information because there is a section called crew audit. And so you will see the, the listed time that the crew stated they clocked in for along with the time that they took that action. So I would see uh, started at 7.53, but we did that at 2.56 p.m. So to finish this, I hit the clock in button. It goes the uh, process, the clock in. So now I am on yard time. And you can see that it's counting up. And that is because, well, 7.53 was uh, much earlier in the day. So we've been working on that for about seven hours now. So we're gonna do a few more things after yard time. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time on the yard. So the next thing I want to do is clock in to one of my jobs. So for that, I'm going to hit the clock in button, either one, or I can open up the job and then clock in here. So before we do that, I'll just show you a few more things about the job card. Uh, first off, we see the job details. So I can hit that button right here to expand and collapse the customer details. So first off, we see um, the customer's name and address. So I can tap on that once again to open up Google or Apple Maps and uh, let's you know, quickly find the, uh, the, the customer's address so you can uh, presumably go there. Uh, the next thing I see is the phone number. There's also a shortcut for that. So if I tap on that, it will ask me if I would like to call the customer. And that's of course, if you need to reach out to them, you've got access to that right there. Now in between this contact card here and the crew summary uh, would be crew notes or crew instructions. So on this job, if I had put in crew instructions, they would be here and the crew would see them so they know what they're doing for that day. On this particular job, I don't have instructions, so that whole section is just omitted. Next, the crew summary. This is gonna display everybody's clock-ins. And for a single job, you might have many clock-ins because we could start um, early in the day and then clock out for a lunch, a lunch break and then clock back in after the lunch has been completed. So you could have several clock-ins throughout the day. Um, finally, with the job, I have my clock-in button. And this over in the left corner, when you have the job open, is the clock-ins button. Uh, the reason for that is we needed to make room for this items button. So we'll explore that in a moment. And then of course, notes once again. Now, if you have a job open, this notes button corresponds to uh, notes from the crew and notes to the customer. We're in the job, so these are job specific notes, no longer uh, equipment slash general comments. So to clock in, once again, I hit this button and it will clock me into that job or from the main screen, I hit clock in and then I choose what am I clocking into? So as you can see, I'm currently clocked into yard time and then I have all of my to do's throughout the day. So I wanna clock into the first thing. There's this button right here you'll notice that is for grouped clock-ins. Going to explain that one later. So I'm gonna select my job from the top of the list. And we see here, uh, here's everybody on the timesheet, including Humberto. Since he's on the timesheet for the day, it's assuming we wanna use him at some point. So that's why he comes back here if he's still not ready to join us, I would just remove him once again. I'm gonna say that he is though. And I'm going to mark this as uh, 8.59 a.m. So I'm choosing to, uh, we spent about an hour on the yard and now we're showing up at about nine o'clock to um, begin work on the job. Now, you'll also notice here, clock out of earlier items. So if you were clocked into something that started earlier than the thing you're about to clock into, it's gonna prompt you to automatically clock out of that item, which 99% of the time you're going to do because you generally don't wanna be working on two things at the same time. Um, unless of course you do, you might have some people that will be doing one thing while others do another thing. Um, but in this case, we're not at the yard anymore. So by clocking into the job, it automatically takes us off of yard time. So I'm going to hit clock in, it's gonna process, 
And now we're off of yard time and it shows us the total summary, two hours and 12 minutes. That was a split between these two people right here. And uh, now we can see that we have a crew summary for yard time. And we are clocked into the construction job. So what am I doing as I'm clocked in? Well, of course the crew is gonna be doing their regular tasks and uh, going out there and doing whatever they need to do for the day. And uh, while they are doing that, they're going to be able to record uh, what they've been doing via this items tab right here. So let's open that up. Uh, now, this job doesn't have a whole lot on it, but uh, if it did have some more stuff, we would see uh, labor, equipment, plants, materials, and so on um, across multiple work areas. So in this case, all we have is this uh, Unilock stone right here. And what I can do on this screen as I scroll about is um, filter by item type. So if I wanted to see my labor, I would click on that, see my equipment, and you keep scrolling materials, subs, miscellaneous items. Yeah, you know, we can see all that stuff right here. So when I want to enter, um, my, uh, my materials that I've used for the day. So let's say we installed 500 square feet of the, uh, the patio here. I would just enter my actual, uh, and we could see that in relation to what we'd estimated. If I'm recording labor, it's the same thing. I tap on the labor area that I'd like to enter, except it's gonna present me with all of the employees. So I could say um, two hours for Jordan, two and a half hours for Calvin, and two and a half hours for Humberto. So I can enter those people's times independently. Now a quick note about that, that depends on how you choose to track your time in the mobile app. You have a couple options. So I'm going to, as a quick tangent, go and show you what those options are. Within the job, I have track time by labor type, or the alternative would be um, track time by uh, job, oh sorry, sorry, clocking on mobile by job and clocking on mobile by labor type. So sorry, this one right here. So this is something we just added the other week. And for a demonstration on how clock in by labor type works, reference the, the video that we had recorded um, in the release notes there. And when we upload this video to YouTube, I'm going to uh, include a link to that video in the description. Uh, so you can check out how uh, labor type based clock-ins work. For this video, we're just going to look at uh, job based clock-ins. So for those job based clock-ins, what I'm doing is I'm just clocking in and out of the job. And then later on, I must manually distribute my labor across the labor types. So if I worked from uh, eight until 12 and I had four hours to record for myself and each of my crew members, I would then want to go and, and, and uh, distribute that time and say, well, I spent uh, four hours, or sorry, let's say three and a half hours on a uh, paver install and then half an hour on cleanup labor. You need to manually type that in. The alternative would be clock in by labor type where you actually clock in directly to paver install. And then when you're done that, you clock directly into um, the, uh, the cleanup labor. So you're either recording your time directly uh, against the, um, the labor types by clocking in and out of them, or you're just clocking in and out of the job and distributing your time at a later date or a later time. So that's what the items tab is for. And uh, as an aside, if we have multiple work areas, this, this job only has a single work area, um, we would see a little uh, button right here that if we click on it, it allows us to filter also by work area. So if I had a paver patio work area, I could see uh, only that as opposed to maybe a, a front garden bed work area. And I could then filter it uh, even more to say, only show me paver patio labor or paver patio materials by uh, using both filters right there. So I'm recording my uh, labor and the items I'm using as I'm going th uh, throughout my day. And we see here the crew summary. Now everything is green because we are currently clocked in and we haven't clocked out yet, so we only see the clock in time. 
if I would like to edit this, I just tap on somebody and then it allows me to either delete the clock in, so maybe you accidentally added somebody when you didn't mean to, or edit the time if you got the time wrong. So I can just change this and then save. So the next thing I would like to do as my day goes on is take a lunch break. So for that, you should clock in and out of the lunch item on your timesheet. And that is coming on there from uh, the division settings. You can change the default start time and default duration for lunch. You can even remove the lunch entirely if you don't like it being on there automatically. And then uh, use this, the non-billable work types button to um, uh, display your lunch breaks. So let's clock in. And to do that, I'm going to hit my clock in button. I'm going to choose lunch as the thing that I am now doing. And we're going to backdate this to 12 o'clock PM, 12 6. So that's what I'm starting. And by clocking into lunch, I am clocking out of my job. And now I'm on lunch. So if I open that job up again, you can see it's grayed out. We're no longer clocked in and we have a clock out time here. And if I tap on those, I can edit both options for time in and time out. Now I'm going to eat my lunch and enjoy that. And once that is done, I'm probably going to continue working on the job that I started that day. So to do that, we can either hit this button once again to clock in. And if I do that, we see that I'm clocked out of the job. So I would select this option right here, or I can open my job and clock in directly from here. So let's do that. We're going to clock in for, let's say 1.07 PM and I'm clocking out of lunch. So we had a very luxurious hour long lunch break. And we see that we're now back on there and every employee has two sets of clock ins and we are also done lunch. So I'm going to continue about my day. And as I finalize my um, uh, details of the job by filling out the items and continuing to clock in and out as necessary, I might write down some notes. So when I tap on that, it's going to say, what type of notes are these? Are they from the crew directed at the supervisor? Or are they from the crew directed at the customer? So I just choose the one that I would like to fill out. And then I can say, um, you know, something like uh, uh, today went well, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, order more paving stones, something like that. And then to confirm, I hit the checkbox up in the top left or hit this button right here to undo the changes that I just made. And we can see that this icon has uh, changed. It's got some lines on it to indicate that there's been text that has been filled out. And if I tap on that, we can see that it's notes from the crew that have been filled out. So let's go back to the main page. So I am now done with my construction job. And uh, I want to go and do my first mowing trim because we're doing a, a construction and maintenance day. So I could do a, a clock into a non-billable travel time at this point, or travel time is going to be included on my job. So whichever, uh, whichever method you're using, you just want to instruct your crew to uh, either track their time against a labor type on the job or use the non-billable. So we've already seen non-billables, so I'm just going to clock right into that mowing term right there. And I'm going to hit clock in and I'm going to select the first mowing trim for James Adams. Everybody's clocking in, and uh, we see here a set of crew instructions. So, mow, trim, blow. I think they know what that means. And then we tap here. So we're gonna start at 2.09, done, clock out of the job, clock into mow and trim, and then here we are. So what's the difference between construction and maintenance? Well, first off, maintenance visits are very similar to non-contract work orders. So you could think of them uh, as, as being very similar. And with maintenance, you've got two types of visits. You've got uh, visits that are billed per visit, where there is a contracted price like $100 per cut for mowing trim. Or their time and materials, where the price is subject, subject to change based upon how long it takes and what exactly you do while you're there. Uh, so 
if it's a time and material visit, that behave, behaves the exact same as a work order uh, because those are also time and material. And we would need to manually fill out the exact amount of time that we spent, which is the exact amount of time we want to charge for. And then we're filling out uh, the materials, plants, and equipment that we've used, which is all going to, going to go together to generate our price for that visit. Um, if it is a contracted per visit type of visit, then when I clock in and out, I don't need to manually distribute my labor anymore and say, you know, this took six total hours. Um, the clock ins are going to do that for us. So if I was clocked into this visit for again six hours, um, it would manually, sorry, it would automatically distribute that labor uh, across all the labor types that I have on that visit. Um, and once again, if it was time and material, uh, that step would be uh, a manual process because you must define what is the time and material. So a few other things that are different. Uh, maintenance visits have statuses. So the statuses can be found if you go into settings under, we'll scroll down a little bit once this loads, under uh, work order substatuses. So that's uh, four from the bottom. Now we have open, closed, and canceled uh, as the main statuses. And so those all have functionality in their top level. You can't add any more statuses, but you can add substatuses. Uh, so those can be whatever you want. And here you can see we completed as requested and completed with follow-up required. Well, if I noticed a work order or a site visit that said follow-up required, um, I would probably try and follow up. And once that's done, I could uh, uh, just change the status from follow-up re uh, required to completed as requested because no follow-up is now needed. Um, so you can add these substatuses if you want and they'll become usable uh, right here. So all of these uh, at the moment just list what is happening. So confirmation required would likely be uh, uh, before, of course, you've confirmed that the visit is supposed to take place. And if you go through that extra confirmation process, once you schedule the work order, you would probably change it to confirmed. And that's your decision if you'd like to go through that process. You could remove that confirmation required status if you don't want to use it. Um, so this one right now is confirmation required, but of course we're going there, so it, it should be confirmed. So when it's open, that's because we're doing work on it. If I don't finish this work order today, or maintenance visit, same kind of thing, uh, I can mark it as partially complete. So if I do that, uh, it's not going to automatically close when I submit the timesheet. So if I had just left it open as confirmed or confirmation required, um, when I submit the timesheet, it's going to prompt me, would you like to close all of the open work orders that you've clocked in and out of that day. So I'd probably say yes, because you know we, we'd finished them. But if I mark something as partially complete, it remains open and it continues to show up day after day on uh, subsequent timesheets. So use this feature if you're going to go back to the job site either uh, tomorrow or within the next couple of days, because that visit's gonna stay open until you mark it as closed manually. Um, if you're not going to go back for a couple weeks, then I would say close this visit and create a follow-up visit. And you can do that by opening the work order, selecting create follow-up, or for a maintenance job, uh, adding a time and material visit or an extra visit to the contract. And then closed. Of course, you could manually close this if you needed to. However, we have that process where when you submit the timesheet, it automatically closes stuff you've done that day. So we don't need to, we can leave it as open. I'm gonna leave this one as partially complete so we can see that behavior when I submit the timesheet. So partially complete, customer contact card up top, crew instructions in the middle, and my crew's been clocked in for about an hour. So that brings us to the items tab. So. This is a maintenance visit that is billed per visit. And I can tell that because there's no option for me to fill out labor. Um, 
the clocking in and clocking out process is going to distribute this labor automatically. So if I'd spent you know, five hours on there, it's going to uh, spread that time out and just use the ratio of uh, labor types to one another. So Motrim blow would get the majority of the labor and uh, cleanup would get uh, a fraction of it. What I can enter though, is uh, the uh, materials and the equipment and all that. So this looks like it's a piece of equipment and I, when I hit equipment, I can see that that is indeed the case. So if I spent longer than I thought, I could say, <clears throat> excuse me, we use the mowing package for three hours instead of two and a half. And depending on the billing type of the visit, that could result in a change of price. In this one, it will not because we have a contracted price per visit. So I edit, just like with construction, the items that I've been using, um, recording the notes, but it's a little bit simpler because the clock in and clock out uh, takes care of the labor for us. And we're only worried about how long we've been at that visit for, not really so much about what we've been doing. Unless it's time and material, in that case, you'd be able to adjust everything. Uh, these options would be selectable in the actuals column. So I'm going to move on from my mow and trim, this one, to the next two right here, but I'm going to do that as a grouped clock in. And before I do that, I actually wanted to highlight something I forgot to mention earlier. On the items tab here, on a construction job, you'll notice that there's estimated and actual quantities displayed, uh, but not progress to date. So we can see that if we flip our phone sideways, it's going to resize and then there's estimated to date. So we haven't started on this job yet. And then our actual amount right here. So the crew leader can see, have I gone over or under uh, what I've been allocated for this job? Just an important aside I wanted to make note of. So let's go ahead and do our group clock in. And to do that, I'm going to hit the clock in button. And then I'm going to hit this little icon at the bottom. Uh, so this is <laughs> three dots or I guess visits that are all grouped together. And so when I hit that button, it's going to show me what is available to group. So I can only group together um, per visit build um, maintenance visits. So I'm going to select both of them because we're grouping them. And when something is grouped, uh, the clock in and out time for both is the same and the labor is just distributed automatically based upon uh, the makeup of those services. So if we had one property that's supposed to take longer, uh, that would get more of the labor when it's automatically allocated. Now, why would you ever use a grouped clock in? Likely because uh, you're in something like a court and you're mowing all the lawns on a court or um, a, a housing area with um, multiple properties all right next to each other. Uh, so the amount of time per property is negligible, but you're able to do the whole area in a, a bit more time. And you don't want your crew clocking in and out every five minutes. That's kind of a waste of time. So you'd like them to, when they're on the court and they're mowing everything, uh, do a grouped clock in for all those visits and it will allocate the time so you don't worry about that. So I'm going to confirm by hitting the orange button and I'm going to also confirm who is working on this and uh, what time we're starting. So I'll start right now and we are clocking out of the mowing trim we were on earlier. I hit clock in and now we can see grouped visits. So when I open this up, we can see that uh, there's uh, two visits that are together. And uh, so here they are, I can, I can tap on it to actually go to that visit specifically. And uh, here's the time for everybody on that grouped visit. So I go and perform that work, and then once it's done, I have nothing else left to do, to do now, so I'm going to hit the clock out button. And you'll notice that this is the only time I've hit the clock out button. If you're constantly clocked into something, you, you, the only time you need to do a manual clock out is at the very end of the day. So you know if, you're, if you get your timesheets set up like that and the crew knows what they're doing, uh, you can have a very efficient uh, clock in, clock in, clock in, finish the timesheet with a final clock out uh, type of workflow. 
So we're clocking out of these two grouped visits, and so far we've only worked for a minute, so I'm gonna say we worked a bit longer than that. Let's say 5.20. And I'm going to clock out, and so now I am done. And this is the total amount of time we spent on both visits uh, in terms of total production hours per employee. So now that I have done everything on my timesheet, well, at this point, I would want to verify everything. So if there's any final notes I want to record, I would make sure I do that. Uh, if there's any items I want to record, I would also make sure to do that. Just give it a quick once or twice over, make sure everything looks good. And I'll show you that um, employee summary we talked about earlier in the session. And we can see here's everybody that's clocked in, their earliest time in and latest time out. So if everything looks good, my next step would be submit the timesheet because it's ready for a supervisor to approve. So I go actions, submit timesheet, and so now it's gonna prompt us with a couple final things. Number one, do we wanna record any final notes in terms of that, those equipment slash general comments? So if I tap on that, you know, I can fill that out. And I'll just write something like that. Good day today. And is the timesheet ready for approval? So if the you, you want your crew leader to um, actually be able to go and edit the timesheet on the website later for some reason, some of you might prefer that, um, they would probably mark it as not ready for approval uh, to signify that they're going to continue to work on it and uh, a supervisor you know, needs to wait a little bit to approve it. Otherwise, they would do everything in the app and once it's ready, they send it off for approval. Close work orders. So you're only going to see this if you have work orders on your timesheet that you've clocked into. So it's going to say, close all open work orders except for those without clock-ins. So if there's anything I didn't do, it would just be ignored and left open, in which case I'd probably want to reschedule it for another day. Um, and I could do that either on the app with that reschedule visit feature or later on on the website. Um, and then of course the things that are marked as partially complete because those were not finished, so they should not be closed. I'd need to manually change it to uh, completed as requested. So I'm gonna leave that as yes, I'm going to submit it. And once I hit submit, it's no longer in progress. So the timesheet has moved. It is now on my submitted tab. And we can see here that there it is. And I can look at it for posterity or if I need to review what I did yesterday, the foreman might want to do that. So that is the app. And as a few final things, I'm gonna show you how that is going to affect the website once we are done with the app component. So this timesheet that I've had open this whole time, it's actually no longer locked. So I just need to refresh the page. And we can see that once it pulls up here, it's going to be um, submitted ready for approval. So we see who submitted it, it was me, and when they submitted it as well. And so here's the job that they were working on. Here is the yard time and the lunch break. And we can see that lunch is overlapping with the job technically, but not really when we look at the clock in, so that is fine. Um, we would wanna make sure though that the crew filled out their time. In this case, that job didn't have labor on it, so I would need to go and add that later. Um, and uh, we see here's the partially complete visit that I left open. So if I click on that, it's gonna load up the job log and we can change the substatus from partially complete to closed when it's actually closed. And I can do that from the timesheet or I can find this work order slash visit somewhere else, um, either by going to the job or looking at my, my calendar or uh, my list of work orders. Um, However I get to it, I'm able to change the substatus and close it once it's completed. These other two here that were grouped, well, we see that they're grouped right here. And now I can check out a few things like the clock-ins. So I'll check this one out because it has multiple clock-ins. Now we see my first two and then Calvin and Humberto's two clock-ins uh, right here. So I can make any changes if I need to. I can also even add clock-ins and clock-outs, and then save it once I'm done, 
So if something was messed up, you're able to uh, edit it on the website later. Um, now we see here's the equipment notes, here's the job notes. So this, this is ready for approval. My final step as a supervisor would be, you know, look over this, make sure everything looks correct, save and approve, and then I am done. So let's check out the crew audit, which I sort of brought up earlier, and we'll see that as our final thing for today. Now the crew audit is for uh, auditing the clock in times, so what the set the clocked in as, uh, according to when they actually did that uh, action, and then the uh, in and out right here. This would be the distance uh, they were from the job site when they clocked in, and the distance they were when they clocked out. So first off, yard time. That was the first thing we did that day. Yard time doesn't have a location, so there's no distance. But we see here, uh, okay, so I started my yard time at 7.53 a.m., but I did that clock in at 2.55 p.m., so that's the timestamp from when they did it. Now, the, the crew, of course, the odd time they're gonna forget to clock in in the morning, so they're gonna need to backdate their time if that happens once in a while, you know, that's okay. Maybe you just remind them to uh, you know, try and remember next time. Uh, but if you're seeing distant, uh, differences here greater than a few minutes on a regular basis, that might be something to uh, investigate further. Um, the clock in process should only take maybe five minutes max if they need to juggle around employees or uh, someone's talking to them while they do it. Um, but this is just so you can keep them honest, make sure that uh, they're filling out their timesheets accurately. Next we see here distance in and out. So like I said, distance they were when they clocked in and out uh, based on their physical location from the job site's address. So whether you're in uh, US or Canada, you're gonna see either kilometers or um, uh, miles. And what you should be seeing here, no matter what uh, unit of measurement you're using, is small numbers. Uh, these should generally be very close to the location as it's listed on Google Maps when they clock in and out. Now they're not always gonna be exactly on the dot because Google Maps might have the property located in the middle of a large field, um, but they're clocking in from uh, you know, the, the roadside uh, in front of the property. So there'd be a small distance there, that's normal. Um, but if you see something greater than, I guess, half a kilometer or half a mile, uh, that would be something to check out. So then you can hit view map and it's actually going to show you where they were based on a, a geo stamp. So right here, if we uh, zoom right in, this black icon is the property. So we can see this is where they were meant to be. We can hover over it to get the address. This is where they were meant to be. But where did they do that from? Well, all the way over here. So I can scroll in a bit and see this is where they were when they did those clock ins and clock outs. Uh, the green one is clock in, the red one is clock out. It's just giving you their general area. Uh, GPS from your phone isn't super accurate, so it might be um, slightly away from where they actually were, but no more than um, you know several yards. So you know, in reality, you might see they're clocking in from uh, around the corner a bit in which case you would say, please clock in when you actually get to the job site or whatever it is that they're supposed to do. Um, you know, your, uh, your mileage may vary with that depending on how you manage your crews. But that's the kind of information you get from the crew audit. Now on this page, we see everybody's clock in times according to the activity that they were doing uh, by their timesheet. So you can filter by timesheet dates, divisions, crews, who the crew leader was, all that stuff to find what you're looking for. And also this one gets time, uh, location stamps, but not in uh, relation to an address. So there's no in and out, but we can see they also did it clocked in and out from uh, right here. So that's everything I have for the mobile app today. Um, I hope the information was very useful. Uh, once again, for those labor type based clock ins, our new feature, uh, there's a, a video out there for that already, which we're going to link in the description of uh, the video when we post it to YouTube, and you can check that out. Great. Thanks a lot, Jordan. No problem.
So if anyone has any questions, uh, please send us an email or give us a call. Uh, email us at support at dynascape.com uh, and give us a call. It's 1-800-710-1900. Extension 1 gets you directly to our support team. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, today's session, uh, as well as the uh, previous sessions, have all been recorded and all posted to uh, the website that you see on the screen here, dynascape.com forward slash dynascape dash manage 360 dash master dash class. Uh, all uh, of the master class sessions are gonna be posted from one uh, to 17. So it's uh, quite a list uh, and uh, you know, we've got a lot planned, we've done a lot and we've got a lot to go. Um, as far as uh, next week, uh, we hope you join us for our ninth installment. And next in the series is job tracking and analysis. So it only makes sense, you know, now that we've uh, created our timesheets, we've gone out and done the work and applied that time and materials and that crew work to the job and to our maintenance contracts. Now we're gonna go and track the progress and do some analysis. So that'll be, uh, uh, all in line for next week. So I hope you join us. It'll be next Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, Jordan, thanks again for that valuable information. Uh, looking forward to uh, talking next week. Have a good afternoon, everybody.